Performing electronic music has been a passion of mine for a number of years. Until Force, there hasn't been a standalone digital instrument that has the tools and workflows that I need in order to build a dynamic performance. What you just saw was an example of what you can do with Force. So in this video, I'm gonna break down the tools and workflows that I use to build this performance. This performance starts off with an arpeggiator on a chord progression that comes with Force. It's really simple. I just have my root chord here, or home. And I switch to the second one, and then back. I already have a clip created, it's a four bar clip. So once it reaches the end, it'll automatically loop back, which allows me to move to the next step, which is to switch over to matrix mode. And here I can launch clips independently from the pads. So that really allows me to have a, an effective workflow when recording because I don't necessarily need to be on launch mode. I can do all my jumping in and out of clips and launching right here on the pads. I have a kick drum, kind of like a bass kick drum on track one that sounds like this. Just hits. And I fade in with that with the crossfader. So it's really convenient to have the crossfader here because it's just like a little volume fader and considering we're working with electronic music, having the crossfader just makes it really feel like a, a kind of a DJ performance. After that comes in, I switch over to launch mode and I have a bass line that I created with hype. And I just simply press the pad and it'll play that. I got a filter assigned to my cue links. In fact, I have all of the filters from all of the tracks assigned to the cue links. So I can bring that up slowly. It's a good sounding synth. And after that runs for a little bit, I will jump over to track seven, which has additional percussion and it also has a snare sample. So I'll input the snare using the step sequencer. I jump over the step, I select the drum that I want, and then I just literally run my fingers across the pads which input those steps. At that point, I just bring up the filter on the snare. And you can hear it a little bit. And I'll jump back into launch mode. And then I launch a vocal. This is everything that happens before the build. So it's just a matter of using the cue links to create some suspense before I drop into the actual launch of the scene. So after the build, one thing that I do that kind of adds a little bit more uh, suspense is I stop all the clips and then I quickly drop in this vocal sample and then follow it up with the scene launch. So all of this happens in boom, 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 one bar. So after I stop all the clips, I got some stuff playing, stop all the clips. <laughs> and I launched the first scene. Once the first scene is launched, I can switch over to the drums and start adding some more elements. And I do this first with the arpeggiation on, on the drum kit. Add those very techno toms and then a clap. And then once the phrase completes, I start with the hi-hats and I record in those hi-hats and you can see the steps are being added inside of the step sequencer. And then I use select to silently select the first open hi-hat and I add that in. And then after four bars, I silently select the second open hi-hat. That comes in. And then coming up is the second scene launch. So I'll mute the kick drum, let that go for a little bit. One, two, three, four. And then I have the second scene. At this point, it's really easy to keep the track moving with a kick fill. So I silently select the kick, choose not quite full velocity with the step sequencer here. And let's listen to that fill a couple of times. And keep note of where this is because you can use these fills if you want. They're very standard. Or you can do the Standard stuff, but again, just little fills, and it's in time because it's on the step sequencer. So after I've done that, I jump out of record mode, and I can jump to track five, go into notes, and I let this jam out for a little bit, and add some extra harmony. And 
And then I want to bring out everything. I do that while holding the pad. And eventually I stop the clips. And then I can run through these different progressions. But as I'm doing this, I actually have to open up the filter on the drums and on the bass all the way. So when I launch the final scene, it comes in full force. And it's just a matter of bringing it down. You can actually fade out the drums. So a little sloppy, but you get the idea. It's just a matter of putting all of these techniques together in order to create the performance. There is some work that goes into the performance beforehand, for example, using the cue links. So I've assigned a filter uh, for each track to the cue links, and I've done that in the master knobs menu. There's a few different modes that you can select this to. I have it on the project. That means I can assign any parameter from either the mixer or a track or any effect across the entire project. Let me demonstrate how I have the cue links set up. And I'll start with the drums by launching a clip with the matrix. So this is my full drum part. As progressed as it gets throughout the whole song, I can mute the kick drum at any time using the knob. And I have pre-assigned that so I can do it independently from the pads or the mixer. I can just bring it back in if I want to. The second knob, I have a filter assigned. So I can filter out the drums if I want to. And I like to fade out my drums with a filter as opposed to volume, just because it sounds a little bit cleaner sweeping through the frequency spectrum. However, if I wanted to, since I have the drums assigned to the A side of the crossfader, I can also use the crossfader to bring that out. On the third cue link, I have a synth that only comes in for about 16 bars near the end of the performance. But if I were to perform this in a club, I'd probably extend it out a little bit longer. So let me show you how it sounds. And that just comes back. But when I was originally writing this, I used a, a part of notes mode. So I went to scales, and then I had the pad rows start on the root. Actually, what I originally did was kind of strum the pads. And then when I recorded it, I forgot to turn off quantization, so it just had this I actually preferred in the end. And it's just a lot of fun to play around with this mode, having the root start and then the scale be in between. And I'm on the, uh, I believe the natural minor scale for this one. So again, the filter is assigned to the third Q link control. On my fourth Q link control, I have the main bass. And I start with a really low filter and I open it up over time to kind of create some suspense during the build. So let's first listen to the bass line. Let's switch over to the UI. And I have tube synth here, which is a analog. That's that warm analog sound. On Q-Link 5, I have the filter for my vocal track. So let me show you what the vocal sounds like. I actually have three different vocal samples that I bring in. I'm bringing it slowly. And this is the second vocal part. On Q-Link 6, I have the most used filter in the entire performance, and that is for the filter on my hype synth here. And as if I have it really low, it's soft, but if I open it up, it becomes really aggressive. On Q-Link 7, I have a filter on my snare roll track. So I input the steps first, and as they're playing, I bring that open to give some suspense. And the one that doesn't really have the most effect is this sustaining string. You can see if I go into launch mode on track six, I have that string playing. If I bring down the filter really low, you can barely hear it. 
So it doesn't have a huge effect, but it's something that I did want control over just in case I can bring it down during the performance. So that covers the cue links. Let me show you some of the navigation techniques you're gonna to need to know. And that's basically jumping in between different tracks. You can select your tracks in the matrix view. But for this performance, what I do is I go into record arm and that allows me to switch tracks quickly. And that navigation is gonna be key, understanding how to jump in between launch, note, your step sequence, and matrix. Those are the main four views that you're gonna to have to navigate around during the performance. One of the benefits of performing on Force is how the screen and the pads and knobs interact together. You can have the screen work independently, so I could launch clips, go in and out of record, launch scenes, do all of that on the screen whilst performing on the pads and tweaking the cueling controls, or I could have the screen follow whatever pad that I'm on. So it's really up to you how you want the screen to follow around during the performance. As you can see, Force really does offer the tools and workflows that make performing music simpler than ever. I hope you've enjoyed this overview and we look forward to seeing how you perform with Force.